Welcome to the Way of Mastery. I'm Earl Purdy here on Facebook Live. Welcome to the Way of Mastery. But that is what you are. Only love. Yes, that is what you are. Teach only love. That is what you are. You are love. That's what you are. Teach only love. Teach only love. Everywhere you go, teach only love. Only love. To everyone you know, teach only love. Only love. Love is what you are. Hey, hey, hey. Let me recognize the problem, so the problem can be solved. Let me recognize the problem, so the problem can be solved. Teach only love. Welcome you to the Way of Mastery here on Facebook Live. And we're going to get down. We're going to talk about the section on called Place Your Trust in the Love That Birthed You. That's what you got to do. Teach only love. Well, that is what you are. Teach only love. Yeah, you're a shining star. to be on page 358, page 358, page 358 in the way of mastery, in the way of knowing, page 358, in the way of knowing, page 358, and we're going to be, and we're going to be doing place your trust in the love that birthed you. In lesson 31, lesson 31. That is Brother John Christmas at johnchristmas.com. I tell you, you want to get some of John's music. It is awesome. Welcome to the Way of Mastery. Welcome to the Way of Mastery. I'm Earl Purdy, and, and I want to welcome you to the Way of Mastery, and I want you to know that we're going to be on page 358, lesson 31, lesson 31 on page 358, in the way of knowing, place your trust 
in the love that birthed you. Place your trust in the love that birthed you. You don't have to believe the ideas. You don't have to accept the ideas. You don't have to welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas may be hard to believe. Some of the ideas may be startling, but you are, you are, you are not asked to analyze and judge the ideas at all. You are not being asked to analyze this. I don't do analyzing classes. I do remembering classes. I do classes on how can we hear what it's saying, not how can we spend the whole time analyzing and debating the ideas. We are about remembering the truth and hearing it. And <clears throat> it's the use of the ideas that will give the ideas meaning to you and will show you that the ideas are true. It is using the ideas, remembering the ideas, applying the ideas. That's what's going to give the ideas meaning to you. That's what's going to show you that the ideas are true. So I want to invite you to share this video. Take a moment right now and share this video. I'm going to get it up on my iPad so I can see your comments. <clears throat> so you see right down where you write your comments, right to the left, there's a share button. So take the time to share it in a group or share it on your timeline so that other people can find out. So that other people can find out what it is that we are doing and they can benefit from what we are doing. So I'm going to go through the paragraph, then we're going to see what the paragraph is saying. I'm Earl Purdy, that's right, DRT, that's the Divine Repetition Teacher. So I'm Early Purdy, DRT, the Divine Repetition Teacher. So place your, place your trust. So what is it that we should place our trust in? Well, let me tell you. So what should you place your trust in? First, I'm going to read through it, and then we'll go through it. Place your trust in the love that birthed you. Don't place your trust in anything other than the God, which is the love that birthed you. When you become so much a lover of what? When you become so much a lover of the wisdom of perfect union with God. So where does wisdom come from? Wisdom comes from you being a lover of your perfect union with God. So how can you tell when you have become a lover of the wisdom of your perfect connection with God? How can you tell that you really love your perfect connection with God? Well, it says so that that is all that matters to you. You are already 90% free of illusion. So how can you tell when you're 90% free of your ego? How can you tell when you're 90% free of your illusions? How can you tell when you are 90% free of your illusions? You will become so much a lover of the wisdom of the perfect union with God the only thing that will matter to you is your perfect union with God will be the only thing that matters to you. Your union with your creator will be the thing that matters the most to you. At that point, you are 90% awake. You are 90% free of illusion. And do you know the world will never have the power to truly bind you again. The world will not be able to limit you. The world will not be able to bind you. The world will not be able to restrict you in any way when you are 90% free of the false ideas that you've learned from the world. And you will know when you are free of the illusion. You will know when you are free of the ego because you will be a lover you will be a lover. But what will you be loving? You will be loving the wisdom 
of the perfect union with God. That's how you can tell when you are 90% free of your ego, of your illusions. You will love your union with your creator. And your union, your connection with your creator, that is all that matters to you. When your connection to your creator is the main thing that matters to you, According to the way of mastery, that means you are 90% free. 90% free of what? You are 90% free of your illusions. And what will happen when you are free of your ego? What's going to happen when you are free of your illusions? The world will never have the power to truly bind you again. Say what? The world will never have the power to truly limit you again when? When you're 90% free of your illusions. When your connection of God is the only thing that matters. When you love the wisdom that comes to you from your union with God, that's when the world will never have the power to truly bind you again. How will you create it so that the world cannot limit you? You've got to be free of your illusions, your fears, your guilts, your false ideas. And how do you become free of your illusion? Your connection to God must be all that really matters to you. You can't be just seeking, you can't be just seeking God to get the money, to get the relationship, to get the power, to get the travel, to get uh, <clears throat> physical pleasure in and of itself. You have to be a person that you're in love with the wisdom that you get from your connection with your creator. And that connection to your creator will be the thing that matters to you the most. And when your connection to the creator is the thing that matters to you the most, you are already 90% free of your illusion. And when you're 90% free of your false ideas and false values, the world will never be able to hurt you, bind you ever again. So what should you do? Well, it says you should place then your trust. So where should you place your trust? You should place your trust in the love that gave birth to you. We're on page 358 in the way of knowing, lesson 31 in the way of mastery. So what is it that we are being told? It says you need to place your trust in the love that birthed you. So, so I'm not going to place my, tr my trust in something outside of myself. I'm not going to put all of my trust in other things outside of myself. I'm going to put my trust in God because God is the love that gave birth to me. So you want to place your trust in the love that gave birth to you. Now, when I say birth you, what do I mean when I say the love that gave birth to you? When I talk about you, I'm going to repeat this. I'm the divine repetition teacher. I want you to hear this. When I say you want to place your trust in the love that gave birth to you. When I say birth you, I'm not talking about the body. I'm not talking about the body. I'm not talking about the body. When I say birth you, I'm not talking about the body. I'm not talking about the body. You are not your body. You are not the body. You are not your body. You are not the body. You are not your body. You are not the body. You are not the body. You are not your body. You are not your body. You are not your body. I'm not talking about the body when I say you. When you when when you look at me through your body and you see this body, this body is not Earl Purdy. 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 You are not the body. You are not the body. You have the body. You have the body. When I talk about birth you, I'm not talking about your personal history. So when I talk about you, I'm not talking about your personal history. I'm not talking about you as a mother, 
you as a brother, a father, a sister, a cousin, a lover, an employee. I am not talking about your personal history. I'm not talking about your ancestry. I'm not talking about your race. I'm not talking about your past, but I talk about you. <clears throat> because you are not your personal history. And do you know that if you are not your personal history, you are not your ego. You are not your ego. You are not your body. You are not your personal history. You are not your beliefs. You are not your ideas. You are not the body. So the you that I refer to, the you that I'm talking about, that you exists within you. The you that I'm talking about, the you that I'm talking about existed before your body. You existed before your body. You existed before your body. You existed before you existed before your personal history. You existed before your ego. Your ego is nothing but what you think you are. So it is though your creator that created you as the powerful ocean in which you have been knowingly or unknowingly, you've been emanating all the waves that have become your particular experience as a soul. You've been emanating all the waves that have become the experience that you've been having as a soul. You have been emanating all of the experiences that you have experienced as a soul. It all emanated from you. What God created is you as this spiritual being, this soul, this light being, this love. Trust the one that created you. It's time for you to do what? It's time for me to trust the power that created me. It's time for me to do what? Say this to yourself. It's time for me to trust the power that created me. It's time for me to trust the power that created me. Say it with me. It's time for me to trust the power that created me. It's time for me to trust the power that created me. It's time for me to trust the power that created me. It's time for me to trust the power that created me. It's time for me to trust the power that created me. It's time for me to trust the power that created me. It's time for me to trust the power that created me. It's time for me to trust the power that created me, it's time for you to trust. The power that created you, it's time for you to trust. The power that created you, it's time for you to trust. The power that created you, it's time for you to trust. Say it, say it, say it. It's time for me to trust. The power that created me, it's time for me to trust. The power that created me, it's time for me to trust. The power that created me, it's time for me to trust. The power that created me, it's time for me to trust. The power that created me, it's time for me to trust. The power that created us, it's time for us to trust. The power that created us, it's time for us to trust. The power that created us, it's time for us to trust. The power that created us is time for us to trust. The power that created us is time for us to trust. The power that created us is time for us to trust. The power that created us is time for me to trust. The power that created me is time for me to trust. The power that created me is time for me to trust. The power that created me is time for me to trust. Now you should be saying it is time for me to trust. The power that created me is time for me
me to trust the power that created me it's time for me to trust the power that created me it's time for me to trust the power that created me it's time for you to trust the power that created you it's time for you to trust the power that created you it's time for you to trust it's time for you to trust yeah It's time for us to trust. The power that created us is time for us to trust. It is time for us to trust. The power that created us is time for us to trust. It's time for us to trust. It's time for us to trust. You are an infinite source of awareness that is perfectly free in every moment What are you perfectly free to do in every moment? In every moment, you are perfectly free to decide what experience you will have. So, you, you, you have, the one that created you is an infinite source of awareness. God is an infinite source of awareness. You are an infinite source of awareness. And you are perfectly free in every moment to do what? You are perfectly free in every moment to decide what experience you will have. Your soul, you have decided every experience that you've had. Every experience has been an emanation from your soul. So why is it important? Why is it important for you to know that you're perfectly free in every moment to decide what experience you will have? You are free. So you could have the experience of love. You could have the experience of joy. You could have the experience of abundance. You could have the experience of healing, happiness, innocence, joy, wealth, You, you are perfectly free in every moment to decide what experience you will have. But there are basically only two experiences that you can have. You're either having the experience of love or you're having the experience of fear. You're either having the experience of oneness or you're having the experience of separateness. You're either having an experience of knowing your eternal innocence and sinlessness or you are having the experience of feeling guilty and sinful. So you are really only experiencing two things. You are, but you're experiencing those two things through any physical situation that you manifest for yourself. So it can seem like you're in a hundred different physical situations and circumstances. But do you know that even though it can look like you in a hundred different physical situations and circumstances, you're only basically having two experiences of those many different situations and circumstances and relationships. You're either experiencing the extension. That's right, Stephen. You're either experiencing the extension of love or the projection of fear. And like Stephen says, I pick love. I pick love too. Diana's saying it's love or fear. Paul says, I choose love. Emily says, I am the chooser. That is exactly who you are. Hey, Shannon. Uh, Diana's saying, every experience has been an emanation from the soul. That is exactly what it is. And Carla, good to see you. So I, remember, I'm a divine repetition teacher. It's about, are we going to let ourselves hear what this is saying? by repeating it to ourselves. So what did we just hear? What did we just hear? We just heard that when all you want is God and the only thing that matters to you is your relationship with God, that's when you can tell you're 90% free of your illusion. That's how you can tell you're 90% awake. And the once you are free of illusion, when the only thing that matters to you is the truth and the only thing that matters to you is God, then the way of mastery says this world will never be able to bind you or limit you ever again. So what were we told next? We were told that we needed to place our trust in the love 
the creator that gave birth to us. But when he says gave birth to you, he says, I'm not talking about your body now. I'm not talking about your personal story. I'm, you are not your story. You are not your body. You are not your ego. You are not your personal history. So the you that I'm talking about is a you that existed as a spiritual being that was aware and alive before you were born, before you came into the physical body. And so we're being told that we need to trust that which created us and that you and I are infinite sources of awareness and we're perfectly free. You are perfectly free in every moment to decide what experience you will have. Now, uh, thank you, Phoenix. I'm glad that I'm the Juices Divine Repetition Teacher, <laughs> baby. So why is this important? Why is this important? Uh, your world would teach you, and the level of perception of the body-mind would say, well, I want to have an experience. Oh, I just have a thought of having an ice cream cone, for example. Well, I've experienced driving my body to the ice cream store and eating ice cream. That event does happen. That's right. You can think of an event you want to have. You can say you want to go to the movie and you've experienced driving your body to the movie and experiencing the movie, that was an event. The way of mastery says over and over again, what's happening all the time, the only thing that's happening in the world, the only thing that's happening are events. They're just events. These events are neutral. And depending on what you want to experience, that's going to determine how you experience the events in your life. And it says, but if you look closely, if you look closely, you will discover that your experience is the value you placed upon the event. See, your, 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 your experience is not the event. Your experience, what you experience is the value you put upon events. What you experience is the value you have put upon that relationship. What you're always experiencing is the value you have put upon that event. What you're valuing, what you are experiencing is the value you place upon your relationship. What you are experiencing is the value you put upon money. What you are experiencing is the value you put upon an event. What you are experiencing is the value you put upon your work, your job, your house, your car, your relationship, your spiritual growth. What you experience is the value that you put upon the event. I know that seems very subtle to you, but what I just said is very, very important. Can you tell me what I just said? What did I say an experience is? Your experience is the value you put upon anything. Your experience of anything is determined by the value you put on it. The experience you have of anybody is determined by the value you put on them. Your experience comes from what you value. Your experience comes from what you value. So do you value love? Do you value the truth or do you value the world? Experience actually occurs, your experience actually occurs nowhere but in the field of your mind. What? Every experience that you have is only happening in the mind. Every experience that you are having, you're only having it in your mind field. That's why you have to be careful going through the mind field. Because sometimes you get blown up. <laughs> your peace gets blown up because you stepped on the wrong thought in your mind field. Experience actually only happens in the mind only. 
You could just as easily go to the store and eat ice cream and have your mind on a book that you were writing or the remembrance of a great love affair or a great movie from the night before and never even notice the taste of the ice cream. You get home and your wife or husband says, well, dear, did you have a good trip to the ice cream store? And you reply, oh, oh, that's right. I did stop at the store. You know, to tell the truth, I don't even remember what I had in the ice cream store. So where does experience occur? Where does experience happen? Where does experience really happen? Where does experience really happen? Because it doesn't really happen at the level of the body. Experience doesn't really happen at the level of the body, man. Experience doesn't really happen at the level of the body, man. Experience doesn't really happen. Experience doesn't really happen at the level of the body. Experience happens at the level of the mind. Experience occurs at the level of the mind. That means every experience that you have is only happening at the mind level, at the thought level. So I will say it again. Every experience that you have is only happening in your mind. Every experience that you have is only happening in your mind because the experience is nothing but a reflection of the value that you place on whatever's happening. So if your experience of me is coming from the value that you put on me, then your experience of me is really happening in your mind. This experience of this gathering right now of our mighty companions you're only having this experience really in your mind because it's your mind that's placing the value on this presentation. So everything you experience it happens in your mind. Everything, anything that you experience ultimately happens only in your mind. So what is it that shapes your experience? What it shapes your experience is your mind. Mind shapes experience. Mind shapes experience. Mind shapes experience. What say mind shapes experience according to what it chooses to value. Mind shapes experience according to what it chooses to value. Your mind shapes your experience according to what your mind chooses to value. What shapes your experience? The mind shapes experience according to what it chooses to value. Your mind shapes your experience according to what it chooses to value. Everything you experience, do you know the Jacqueline? Do you know that everything you experience only happens in your mind? Kim, do you know that your experience happens in your mind. Do you know, Phoenix, that cherry jubilee ice cream only happens in your mind? Do you know, Patricia, it's in the mind field? Diana, experience occurs in the mind. Emily, I zoned out in the shower and while driving, it happens. That's where you had that experience. Now, does that mean... Does that mean that you just drop doing anything in the world? Does, since everything happens in, in your mind, does it mean that you just drop all your responsibilities and everything you're trying to do in the world? No, 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 no. Does this mean that you just drop doing anything in the world? No. So now I want you, would you like to hear, would you like to hear how an awakened being functions in the world? Would you like to know how you are going to be in the world when you are spiritually awake? Would you like to know exactly how you will be experiencing your life when you are if the if the uh, broadcast freezes just hang in there don't do anything 
just stay right where you are. It'll be back, okay? That's the way it works. So would you like to know how an awakened being in the world functions? How you're going to be? Here you go. I'm going to jam it to you because it's so cool. When you are an awakened being in the world, you're going to simply delight. You're going to have fun. You're going to simply delight. And you're going to have fun. How are you going to have fun? How are you going to have fun? From a state of clarity of knowing that whatever you choose to do with your body, mind, is merely a free choice based on what you are choosing to value in the moment. You're going to choose what you want to do with your body and your mind, and it's going to be a free choice. And what you do with your body, what you do with your mind, is going to be determined by what you value in the moment. And if you own that valuation, you can totally enjoy the experience that you're having. So how do you enjoy the experience that you're having? You own that. I'm having this experience with Raj right now. I'm having this experience with Earl Purdy and my mighty companions right now because this is what I value. And I'm going to own my valuation. And then it says that you know when you are awake, that whatever you choose to do is merely a free choice. You're listening to this and you're watching this. When you are an awakened being, you're going to go, this was a free choice based on what I'm choosing to value in this moment. And what I'm choosing to value is this way of mastery Facebook live presentation. So I'm going to own that I'm having this experience with you right now because I'm choosing to value this class right now. And so I can totally enjoy the experience that I'm having. And so then the awakened being has come full circle. So what do you do when you awake? If you want to design a website, <clears throat> if you want to be a banker, if you want to be a dancer, if you want to be a prostitute, if you want to be a farmer, it no longer matters. If you want whatever you want to be, it no longer matters. When you wake up as a spiritual being, that means you know that you can totally enjoy the experiences that you're having because you're owning that what you are experiencing is coming from what you are valuing. And you know that what you're valuing is coming from a free choice based on what you're choosing to value every moment. You're coming from a state of clarity. You coming from a place of knowing that you are the one that's making the choices. You are the chooser. And so you simply delight and you simply have fun. Then you come full circle. So when you have come full circle, what does that mean? It means that you absolutely can do whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter what you want to do. If you're an awakened being, you can choose to do whatever you want to do. Because for the mind that is awake, while the body lasts, merely sees experience arise and pass away. So when I am awake, when I am awake, this is what I'm doing. I'm seeing an experience come and I'm seeing experiences go. I'm seeing experiences come, I'm seeing experiences go. I'm seeing events come, I'm seeing events go. I'm seeing people come, I'm seeing people go. I'm seeing circumstances come, I'm seeing circumstances go. I'm seeing things come and I'm seeing things go. When I am an awake being, when I am an awake being, I see experience arise and pass away. I take total ownership. I take total ownership and realize that I have the power to create my experience. I have the power to create my experience. Say it. I have the power to create my experience. Say it. I have the power to create my experience. Let's participate. I have the power to create my experience. 
I have the power to create my experience. We have the power to create our experience. We have the power to create our experience. I have the power to create my experience. I have the power to create my experience. I have the power to create my experience. You have the power to create your 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 experience. We have the power. We have the power. Say what? We have the power to create our experience. 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 So, we realize that we have the power to create our experience as being delightful. What does that mean? I have the power to create an experience that is delightful. I have the power to create an experience for myself that is delightful. I have the power to create an experience of myself and my life that is fulfilling. I have the power to create an experience that is fulfilling. I have the power to create an experience that is a blessing. I have the power to create an experience that is a blessing. You are a being with the power to create your experience as a blessing regardless of what your body is actually doing, regardless of what your lower mind is actually doing, you have the power to realize, you have the power to create your experience as being delightful, fulfilling, and a blessing. Your life should be delightful, fulfilling, and a blessing. Your life, may your life be, may your life be. May your life be, I will say it, may your life be delightful, fulfilling, and a blessing. May your life be delightful, fulfilling, and a blessing. May your life be delightful, fulfilling, and a blessing. May your life be delightful, fulfilling, and a blessing. May your life be delightful, fulfilling, and a blessing. May your life be delightful, fulfilling, and a blessing. May your life be delightful, fulfilling, and a blessing. May your life be delightful, fulfilling, and a blessing. Regardless of what your mind or body is actually doing. That's right, Diana. You are saying we have the power to create our experience. What you say, Jean? I have the power. Phoenix, you say I have the power to create my experience. We always have a choice. I choose freedom in spirit. Emily says that she is dancing I know how you feel. I love to dance. Bridget says, Awaken. I have the power to create my experience fulfilling, delightful, and a blessing. Trisha, shooting out the hearts. Ooh, Trisha, I feel the hearts. Kim, may your slices be for fulfilling and a blessing. May your slices, that's interesting, be fulfilling and a blessing not slices <laughs> slices is good that's cool that's cool kim that's cool that's cool there can be no difference it doesn't matter if you are a teacher standing at a boat on the shores of a great lake in what you now call israel talking to a horde of hundreds or perhaps seeing if you can actually make a few fish and loaves of bread feed five thousand and then said oh how about that that was fun there is no difference between what Jesus did and driving a truck in New York City and delivering frozen fish. If the man within the soul, if the man within your soul, if the man within your soul is taking complete ownership, if you are taking complete ownership, if you are delighting in the mystery, 
of what? If you are delighting in the mystery of what? Creating experience. I want to ask you to delight in the mystery of creating experience. Delight, delight, delight in the mystery. What kind of mystery? The mystery of creating your experience. Take delight in the mystery. The mystery of creating your experience and choosing to bring enjoyment. I say choose to bring enjoyment. Say it. I choose to bring enjoyment. Say what? I choose to bring enjoyment and freedom to this moment. I choose to bring enjoyment and freedom to this moment. That's what we're doing together, mighty companion. This is what we're doing. We're choosing to bring enjoyment and freedom to this moment. And do you know, this is why events of the world can never bind you. 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 <clears throat> so why does suffering come? Would you like to know why all suffering comes? Would you like to hear for clearly where all suffering comes from? Listen carefully, I'm going to tell you where all suffering comes from. Listen, all suffering comes because the interpretation, all suffering comes from the interpretations that you are overlaying over the events in your life. Do you know that all the suffering that you go through is coming from the interpretations that you are putting on all the events that are happening to you? Do you know that all of your suffering comes from the way you are looking at things? Do you know that all your suffering comes from the way you're looking at things? And in that very moment that you are looking at things in such a way that causes suffering, you have used God's gift to you. And what is God's gift to you? Do you know that God's gift to you is the power of awareness. God gives you the power to be aware. God gave you the power to be aware. God gave you the power to be aware. God gave you the power to create your experience. God gave you the power of awareness. So whenever you're suffering, you're only suffering because of the interpretation that you're putting on some experience in your life. And when you are giving yourself interpretations that are based on fear, anger, guilt, blame, grievances, unforgiveness, attack, and lack, when you are giving your experience painful, fearful, angry interpretations, then at that very moment of your suffering, you are using God's gift to you. And what is God's gift to you? God's gift to you is the power to be aware. You have the power to create your experience. And you're using the power to create your experience to create an interpretation that causes you suffering. So once again, Yeshua or Jesus says, my crucifixion was my final learning lesson in the realization that I had broken the spell. Jesus says in the way of mastery, I was no longer under the spell of the egoic mind or the body mind. I merely looked upon my experience and decided to freely be in a state of love in the midst of that context of being crucified. So what is the message that Yeshua has given us? That no matter what you're going through, no matter how you may be crucifying yourself in some area, attacking yourself in some area, afraid of being attacked in some area, in whatever area you are suffering in, you could do the same thing that Yeshua did. 
Yeshua merely looked at the experience that he was having and decided to freely be in a state of love. Even in the midst of this hell that I'm going through, I can choose for love. No matter what I'm going through right now, in whatever area of my life I'm crucifying myself and with fear and suffering, if that is indeed the case, I can decide to see it differently. I can decide to I can decide to freely be in a state of love. I choose to be freely. I choose freely to be in a state of love. I've decided to freely be in a state of love. Even in the midst of this fear, even in the midst of this upset that I'm going through right now, I decide to freely be in a state of love. I need to get off my cross too, Kim, and I need to freely decide to be in a state of love in the midst of that context. Alita, isn't that right? You choose for love in the situations you are going through. You are free to love. That's true, Jacqueline. That is true, Phoenix and everyone else that's watching and listening to this right now. I don't care what you're going through, and I want you to have peace, and I want you to have joy. But sometimes, even in the midst of something that's frightening and upsetting, you just have to decide to freely be in a state of love right in the middle of that context. You are free to be in a state of love. You are free to choose for love in any context. As you watch and observe the waves of what is temporary come and go. I am choosing to be in a state of love as I watch all the temporary things in my perception come and go. Because everything that you see through the physical senses will end, will change. Anything born in time will end in time. So everything you see is like a wave of the temporary. And when you are an awakened being, you, uh, you choose for love. And at the same time, you just watch all the things that you are physically looking at come and go. And as you see things come and go, but you're in a state of love, as you see that happen, as you develop the capacity within yourself, because you've been making these choices for love through the choices for forgiveness, which is the choice for love, and through the choice to be happy instead of needing to be right, you're going to make the choice to live in innocence and wonder instead of certainty, instead of certainty and dread. You are going to choose to rest in true knowledge rather than the relative knowledge of the world. You come to see that everything that's arising and everything that's passing away can never leave you. In other words, an awakened being begins to see that loss is impossible. An awakened being recognizes that it is impossible to lose. It is impossible for you to lose. No matter what it looks like, it's impossible for you to lose. Loss is impossible. It's impossible to lose. An awakened being knows it's impossible for you to lose. It's impossible for you to lose. I know it may look like you have lost in some areas of your life. It may even look like you've lost, lost some people in your life, but it's impossible to lose. It's impossible to lose. For where the mind chooses to rest in love, when your mind chooses to rest in love, everything that arises and everything that passes away is remembered. When you choose to rest in love, you will remember everything. You will restore everything in your mind. You will sanctify everything. And there is perfect peace. In other words, let me give you an example. 
My best friend since childhood made his transition about a month ago. A beloved friend. And it says right here, though a beloved friend passes away, though a beloved parent, friend, relative, somebody you love, even though it, they may look like they have passed away in what you call, quote unquote, death. Even if someone that you know seems to have died because you don't identify that person with being their body, because you don't identify that person as being their ego mind, and because you don't, then perceive that you can no longer love your friend. You just enjoy loving your friend. See, as far as I am concerned, my best friend is still alive. Because dropping the body does not mean that a person is dead. Just because a person drops the body, it doesn't mean they no longer exist. You still exist when you don't have a body. To be without a body is our natural state. To be without a body is our natural state. Do you know that to be without a body, that is our natural state? To be without a body is our natural state. To be without a body is our natural state. So if you keep staying in that place where you are choosing to still love that friend, that relative, whoever seems to have died, as you abide in that love, you begin to experience the reality. And the reality is that nothing dies, nothing dies, nothing dies. Nothing dies. Nothing dies. Nothing dies. You are not going to die. You are not going to die. The body will die. The body will die. The body will change form. The body will be laid down. Yes. Thank God. Yes. You don't die. The body does. You do not die. The body does. You do not die. The body does, but the body is your communication device. So that's why when someone drops the body, we think they're gone because their communication device, the body, is no longer functioning. So they can't communicate to you as long as you think they have to have a body for you to be able to communicate with them. It's when you know that our minds are joined and joined beyond the body's death you can still be in communication with anyone that you love, that you think has died. You can still be in communication with anything that you think has died, including a pet. As long as you get that, that do your dog was not his body, your pet was not their body, your friend was not their body, that person was not their body. For pure intelligence can go nowhere one of your scientists once says, I think I have it figured out. Energy is what makes up everything, and energy can never go anywhere. Energy can only change form. But the essence or the energy remains. This is not unlike a mystic or a sage or a savior or a messiah or a very ordinary everyday person waking up and saying, you know only love is real. You know only love is real. And in love, all things exist forever. In love, all things exist forever. I am not separate. I am not separate. I am not lost. I am not lost. I am free. I am free. That is what we're supposed to remember to say to ourselves. So what is the great journey in the field of space and time? What is this great journey? This great journey is to allow that awareness to settle into your beingness so that the quality of awareness permeates and pervades the level of your ego, fearful mind. This is a great journey through time and space to allow your awareness to settle into your being and so permeate and pervade the level of your ego, which is the level of interpretation, which is the level of the perception of your lower body and mind, which is the apparatus of the brain and the nervous system. And all of that's still going to be going on. 
but you begin to pervade your whole physical body, your whole physical experience with the growing awareness of what? The growing awareness that only love is real. And do you know that not only is love real, you have the power to extend forgiveness. You have the power to extend love. You have the power to extend a correct perception. Every man, every time, do you know that every time your mind trusts in the one that created it, every time your mind rests in the peace of the one that created it, a miracle will happen in your life. Every time you trust in the creator that created you, for real, a creator of love, not a creator of punishment. A creator of punishment and condemnation does not exist. To, pe to pray to a God of fear is to pray to a God that doesn't exist. And every time you rest in the peace of God, a miracle occurs. Every time that you have extended forgiveness, a miracle occurred because when you withdraw valuing the old perceptual system when you choose for love when you choose for reality a miracle will happen so who is the enlightened sage who is the enlightened sage it's somebody who has cultivated the practice of training their mind it's somebody that's trained their mind to choose the reality of love under all circumstance. A enlightened person is a person that chooses the reality of love under all circumstances. An enlightened person is a person that chooses the truth under all circumstances. Though you might be tempted to do otherwise, when you become an enlightened sage, you're going to choose the reality of love under all circumstances. And though... You might have many successes, even as an enlightened being. Even though you might have many successes, you have come to know that what you have chosen is true. God has been revealed. The truth has been revealed. That you are awareness. And you are an awareness that's free to choose through what you value, what experience you will have. God has been revealed Loyalty is no longer a question. I'll say it again one more time. You have the power to extend forgiveness. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is correct perception. Forgiveness is true perception. Forgiveness is love. Forgiveness isn't, I'm overlooking what I think somebody did to me. Forgiveness is, I'm looking at the situation correctly. And when I'm looking at the situation correctly, I know that I'm suffering from my interpretation and not from what appears to be the event that's happening. And so I have the power to extend forgiveness. So I'm going to do a quick recap. Thank you for tuning in to The Way of Mastery with me. If you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation as I am a full-time teacher, then go to earlpurdy.com www.earlpurdy.com. Also, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one personal sessions to correct perception and get you past, help get you past any block that you're having. It's called a clarity session. Go to my website, earlpurdy.com. And you can find out in detail what a one-on-one -on -one session with me is like and how it can benefit you. And I've been doing it for almost 40 years. And of those 40 years, I've been a soul astrologer and numerologist also. And a full-time teacher of A Course in Miracles for over three decades. And the Way of Mastery for over 10 years. So I can be of assistance to you. You can also use Venmo if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation. My email is Earl Purdy at EarlPurdy.com. So Thursdays at 7 o'clock p.m. we have Hardcore Course in Miracles on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook and on Tuesdays we do the Way of Mastery at 7 p.m. Mountain Time and on Sundays 
At 1 p.m., I do another Course in Miracles Facebook Live class on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook. All the times are mountain times. All right. Mm, mm. Okay, so we're going to complete this. You know, I'm the Divine Repetition Teacher. Please share this video. Please share this video. So we're going to, we are going to now allow ourselves to hear this again one more time. Are you ready? I have the, I have, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's do this. Let's do this. Are you ready? Let's complete with this affirmation. I have the power to extend forgiveness. 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 You have the power to extend forgiveness. You have the power to extend forgiveness. We 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 have the power to extend forgiveness. You know only love is real. Only love is real. Only love is real. Only love is real. Say it. Only love is real. Only love is real. Only love is real. And in love all things exist forever. 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 I am not separate. I am not separate. I am not separate. I am not separate. You are 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 not separate. I am not lost. I am not lost. I am not lost. I am not lost. You are not lost. You are not lost. You are not lost. Now say this. I am free. I am free. I am free. You are free. I am free. I am free. You are free. Mighty companions, you have communicated with me so beautifully. We've had a divine, a divine repetition class. Don't forget to listen to the replays and let yourself allow this to permeate you. Place your trust in the love that gave birth to you. Mighty companion. I appreciate you. This is Earl Purdy. May this course be with you. Love you. Love you. Thank you, Phoenix. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, all of you. Love you.